Hey kids, welcome to lesson 14, building an app, image scroller, final image scroller, everyone. Finally, we are here. You are now ready to add key event functionality to your app. As you're doing so, keep an eye out for places where you need to refactor old code in order to prevent redundancy. Create functions that carry out repeated tasks and make other changes to keep your code readable and consistent. If you want a reminder of how key events work, you can always go back to the examples from earlier in this lesson. You will need to add if statements to check for which keys are pressed just as before. And I remember that, so I am ready to tackle this. We have a do this here. We want to add the ability to respond to key events in your app. Refactor your old code to remove redundant portions. And keep adding code to your program. What other features do you want to include? We are definitely going to tackle these two in this lesson. But this last one, adding to your program, if you've gotten this far and you've gotten the key events working and you refactored all your old code, that is very good to submit. But as always, I really want you to take it a step further and add your own personality to your app. These could be just cosmetic changes to anything to adding new features. Please be creative. You know how much I like it. This overall doesn't sound too bad. Really what we're doing is we're going to add a left and right arrow key to ours and then we are going to remove some redundant code. And I think I'm gonna start off by removing the redundant code and then going backwards. What redundant code do I wanna get rid of? If you see here on my next or previous button, my code is gonna look very similar to this. Basically, I'm going to wrap this part in a function because I'm gonna use this code for my arrow key on my keyboard and for the button, we might as well just use the same code over instead of just repeating it. That way, in case something happens, at least we know it'll be in the function, not in one of the pieces of code. Let's go down to the bottom to do this. What I wanna do is I wanna create a function. So I'm gonna drag a function into here. This function I think is going to be called do next item. This is just going to tell my code do the next item. Let's go back up to the top here. I'm going to come up here in this code right here. This is the next button code. And really what I want to do is copy this inside part here. How this is working is on the event the next button is clicked, we are going to add one to our current index. If the current index equals the length, we're going to reset it back to zero. Again, we're going to use the same code in our key press, so we might as well reuse it. So I'm going to hit copy here. I'm going to delete, and then I am going to just put a placeholder here to remind me place, place code back here then I know to go back here, this is where it's gonna go. Down here, my do next item, I'm just going to control V and paste that code in. That means my do next item is going to add one to my current index. If it's equal to the length of it, it's gonna set it back to zero and update the display. Now I can call this function here. So do next item, if I go back up here to my code and in its place, I put do next item and I call that function, it should do the same thing. Let's test our code out and see if that's what happens. When I hit run and hit next, it should scroll through my cute little dog pictures, run, And there it goes, one, two, three. So it's working just as it should. I know this piece of code is working. Let's work on our previous code. So we are going to take all this in the middle again, 
And this is doing the exact same thing as the next button. When we click the button, it's taking one away from the index. If the index is less than zero now, then we are going to set our current index to whatever the length of the list is. And because we in index zero through nine, we are taking one away from our list so we know we are on the right item. I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna delete this part. Again, put a placeholder, insert code here. I'm gonna go down to the bottom here. I wanna comment this out. This is my next feature. Same thing down here. This is my last feature. Drag another function in here and I'm gonna paste this inside. So I'm gonna put that in there. I wanna call this function something. Let's call it do last item. Original, I know. We have our little yellow triangle saying, hey, you declared it but didn't call it. Let's go back up to the top to look for our placeholder. Insert code here. Now we can put our do last item call. And now when I hit run, next and last should work just like it did before. So run and works perfect. Why did I take care of the redundancy part first? Well, I'm gonna add code and it makes no sense to rewrite the code again that I'm just gonna substitute out. Now that I got this next and last down, it's easy to use and I can add it anywhere I want. Let's go ahead and add it then. What I wanna do now is I wanna add an event. So I'm gonna drag an event in here. And my event is going to be when what happens? Well, this is going to be the screen. Screen picks up all of our keyboard mechanics. Delete this, I'm gonna put screen one in. Again, that's just that screen one right there. I don't wanna click though. What I want is a key down. Right now my function is empty, but we're actually going to add an event, a event.key. That means I need to put the event right here in my function. Inside here, what do I add? Well, if you remember a couple lessons ago, really what I did was I just set event key equal to left and right. That looked like if event.key equal equal right, remember you have to spell it just like it is. So it's a capital R, R-I-G-H-T. We are going to put our curly Q right here. If that happens, so if the right key happens, we are going to do next item. Instead of typing that code all out to replace it, that's why I did my function first because I knew I was gonna use this code again. Might as well be efficient with it. That right there is just my right key. We have to take care of my left key. If you remember to the previous lesson, we had to use a else if statement in there. And then we are going to do the same thing, event.key. If this is equal to left, then we are going to do last item. Not too bad. When I hit run now, when I hit the left and the right arrow, it should do the same thing as my next and last key. Let's check it out on my cute little puppy. Run. Let's check the regular functionality. Next works. Last works. Arrow key. Back and forth. Ooh, that lets me scroll through quickly. How cute that is. Looking back up here to our do this, we added the ability to respond to key events. We did refactor our old code and removed redundant portions. You can keep adding to your program now before you submit. Feel free to add more pictures, maybe an ability for the user to add new images. Please be as creative as you like. Well, I think that's all for me on this one. 
but you kids did a great job on number 14. I know this was a tough one, but you did a phenomenal job. I cannot wait to see what you kids made. And we are going to move on to lesson 15. Only three more lessons left, kids. Good job. I'll see you on lesson 15.